There is one mind common to all individual men. They are merely two spheres of activity within one mind. There are not two minds. Your conscious mind is the reasoning mind. It is that phase of mind which chooses, weighs, dissects, analyzes, investigates, scrutinizes, comes to conclusions and decisions. For example, you choose your books, your home, your partner in life. You make all your decisions with your conscious mind. On the other hand, without any conscious choice on your part, your heart is kept functioning automatically, and the process of digestion, circulation, and breathing are carried on by your subconscious mind through processes independent of your conscious control. Your subconscious mind accepts what is impressed upon it, or what you consciously believe. It does not reason out things like your conscious mind. It's a one-track mind. It does not argue with you controversially. Your subconscious mind is like the soil, which accepts any kind of idea, good or bad. Your thoughts are active and might be likened unto seeds. Negative destructive thoughts continue to work negatively in your subconscious mind, and in due time will come forth into outer experience, which corresponds with them. Remember, your subconscious mind does not engage in proving whether your thoughts are good or bad, true or false, but it responds according to the nature of your thoughts or suggestions. For example, if you consciously assume something to be true, even though it may be false, your subconscious mind will accept it as true and proceed to bring about results which must necessarily follow because you consciously assumed it to be true. Your subconscious mind cannot argue controversially. Hence, if you give it wrong suggestions, it will accept them as true and will proceed to bring them to pass as conditions, experience, and events. Your subconscious mind is oftentimes referred to as your subjective mind. Your subjective mind takes cognizance of its environment by means independent of the five senses. Your subjective mind perceives by intuition. It is the seat of your emotion and the storehouse of memory. Your subjective mind performs its highest functions when your objective senses are in abeyance. In a word, it is that intelligence which makes itself manifest when the objective mind is suspended or in a sleepy, drowsy state. Your subjective mind sees without the use of the natural organs of vision. It has the capacity of clairvoyance and clairaudience. Your subjective mind can leave your body, travel to distant lands, and bring back information oft-times of the most exact and truthful character. Through your subjective mind, you can read the thoughts of others, read the contents of sealed envelopes and closed safes. Your subjective mind has the ability to apprehend the thoughts of others without the use of the ordinary objective means of communication. It is of the greatest importance that we understand the interaction of your objective and subjective mind in order, in order to learn the true art of prayer. When your conscious and subconscious mind function harmoniously and peacefully, when they work together in unison and in harmony, the result of that is harmony, health, and peace, and joy, and happiness. All the evil, the pain, the suffering, the misery, and the war, and the crime, and the sickness in the world are due to the inharmonious relationship of your conscious and subconscious mind. Remember we said your subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. In the Bible, it says the husband is head of the wife. The husband in the Bible is your conscious mind, and the wife is called the subconscious in the Bible. That's not true uh, from a literal standpoint, but it's true psychologically only. Your subconscious is controlled by your conscious mind. It's amenable to suggestion and controlled by it. So the wife, your subconscious, is sub subject to the man or to the mind and all conscious mind in all things. That's true psychologically only. Whatever your conscious mind, remember, feels to be true, your subconscious accepts. Your capacity to imagine and feel and your freedom to choose the idea you will entertain gives you power over all creation. Do not dwell on the imperfections and shortcomings of others, or their frailties, or their derelictions. Why? Because whatever you think and feel about another, you create in your own mind, body, and circumstances. Ask yourself, would I like to live with what I am thinking and wishing for the other? If you would, if you would, well, uh, the answer is in the affirmative. Sign up to youarecreators.tv to download and listen to the full audio.